Hello, good evening and welcome to a very special Most Wanted Live. I'm standing outside of Eastern State Penitentiary in the heart of Philadelphia, a place that can only be described as hell on earth for all of those who occupied it. So join me, Yvette Fielding, as I unleash the demons of Eastern State Penitentiary. Live. For the first time, we're going to be investigating a piece of fascinating history. It is, of course, the Eastern State Penitentiary. Now, of course, before we get everything underway, I want you to meet some members of the investigation team. The first person is a man who, without him, we couldn't do Most Haunted at all. He is somebody who guides us and protects us when we do our investigations. He's our medium and psychic, David Wells. Hi, David. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm okay. Now, this has to be the most extraordinary investigation we're ever going to undertake. Mm -hmm. Normally, we do uh, three nights, and each night we do three hours. Yeah. This particular night, it's seven hours long. How on earth are you going to cope with that? I'm going to have to pace myself, I'm going to have to watch my energy, more importantly, the, there was a full moon last night, so that's going to help the whole place be buzzing, which of course is going to drain us even more, mm. so it's a case, so it's just really about taking our time, but we'll go at their pace eventually, you know. Okay, so of course we couldn't do Most Haunted without the investigation team, they're very courageous and very, very brave, so please meet them, here they are. Of course there's Carl Beatty, Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, there's Ian Cash, Stuart Torrevel, and Kath Howe. And two new members uh, that are joining the team. There is Shaggy on sound, and Chris, who's going to be our cameraman. Here they all come. How on earth are you feeling, guys? Well, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Seven hours, I mean, David's just said how he's gonna cope with the whole thing. How are we gonna cope as a group, as a team? You know, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do what we always do. We're gonna stick together. We're gonna uh, hunt the paranormal in what I think is probably the scariest place we have ever been in our entire lives. And we've all had some nightmares as well, some of us, so we're oh, feeling yeah. very apprehensive about it. I know I certainly am. So who's going to steer the ship for Most Haunted Live over the next seven hours? Who's going to be our host? It's the lovely, it's very, very nice to have him here. It's our host and your host, Mr. Paul Ross. Hello. Hello, what an amazing <laughs> and awe-inspiring place. And the thought that something like 75,000 men and women were condemned to spend years of their lives within these walls is guaranteed to make the hairs on the back of everyone's neck just prickle ever so slightly. So with that cheery thought in mind, <laughs> let's get this long and unique night of paranormal mm. investigation underway. Yvette and the team, good luck. Let's begin the vigil. Thanks, Paul. pretty sure we are in for a fantastic night of ghost hunting. I'm hoping you're getting some sense of this building, the crumbling walls, the atmosphere just oozing from these cells. I'm not psychic at all, but I felt chills as I came in here tonight. We're going to be doing our best to unravel some of the mysterious secrets of Eastern State Penitentiary and who knows, maybe meet some of its ghostly occupants. To give you a little taste of its past, here's a look back at Eastern State Penitentiary. Deep in the heart of the city of brotherly love sits the brooding gothic edifice that is Eastern State Penitentiary. Designed to strike terror into the hearts and minds of offenders and to deter them from the commission of crime. Its construction was heavily influenced by the Quakers, amongst other social reformers who held that wrongdoers could be rehabilitated through religious instruction, labor and solitary confinement. They believed this lone incarceration away from human contact would lead inmates to penitence, the root word that gives us penitentiary. In its early days, it housed men, women and children.
if any information emerges, any names, any dates, they'll be cross-referenced and sourced by this woman. We brought her all the way from England. It's our academic and historian, the lovely Leslie Smith. Wow, I tripped on. These places are so claustrophobic, these shells. They were meant to be, yes. This place opened in 1829, a place of reforming vision, but in fact turned out to be, of course, somewhere of despair, mental illness, death, and some would argue torture. My name is Willie Lee Smith. Uh, I, I came here at the uh, East State Penitentiary in 1947. Uh, I was accused of uh, murder and I had got a life bet. I did uh, 20 years, 8 months, 29 days here. And this is the first cell that I was in after uh, coming here at the East State Penitentiary in 1947. I've never pretended to have psychic abilities, but I can see in all our futures a particularly impressive and maybe terrifying night. Let's get straight to Yvette Fielding and the Vigil team for their first foray into Eastern State Penitentiary. Yvette, how are you doing? Hi Paul, we're actually here in cell block 14. Um, as you can see, we haven't gone to night vision yet. We just wanted to give everybody um, a sense uh, of what this, what this place is like. There's dripping water coming from above us. We can hear the rumbling of thunder in the distance. It really is horrific. Uh, the, the paint is peeling off the walls. You can still see that there's, you know, what the old cell blocks look like now. They look absolutely awful. It's getting darker and darker by the minute. So. Should we just have a walk, guys, and just see, see what we pick up? Now, it's really wet on the floor as well. So if it starts raining, we're, uh, we're in trouble as well. So, David, what comes to mind straight away is, as, as we're walking in this particular area? Well, I mean, the whole prison, as soon as you walk through those doors, the, it, the, it's really oppressive. You know, emotionally, I feel exhausted already, like a few minutes in. Yeah. And I think it's the... There's a real mixture here. There's almost like a reverent silence. And then there's also this, you know, this clutter and noise. In this part, though, I'm very aware of um, two... Oof. It's water, I think. Water, it? yeah. Two? Two astrals right. already. Uh, one seems to be a guard. A guard? One's a guard and one is a... Th I can't quite, can't quite get a grip on him. When you say the guard, can you see what he looks like? He's more Victorian than anything. He's, he's perhaps into the 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, the problem I have is I don't know who's associated with what wing because, because we're here, they can sometimes come to you straight away. And this is such a massive place. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now this guard, how did he die? Why is he still here? He's, he's really, he's appearing to me. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a struggle, just... Go! Sorry, was that someone doing that above us? There's nobody above us. There's no one above us. Did you hear that? What did you hear? Oh, like something was about to fall. Like it was on the edge of yeah. fire, yeah. Sorry, go on, David. His throat's, his throat's gaping open, so his throat's been cut. I can see, I can see his throat, and I can see the flesh opening up. And it's almost like, um... It's almost like he's showing me that. It's almost like he's, 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 he's lifting his head like that so oh. I can see it, so I can actually physically see this. And how old is this guard? He's in his 40s. He's in his 40s. And who, will have, who would have slashed his throat? It, it, I think, well, it was a prisoner. A prisoner here? Yeah, yeah. And when would this have happened? When did he die? This is... 19... 1940s, 1942, 43. Oh, so quite recent yeah, then. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, any name with him yet? I know it's very early. Any name with this guard? Not at the moment. No. No, there's no name. No name with him at the moment. He's actually quite mocking me. It's almost like, um, do, do you know, it, I tell you exactly what I'm seeing. It's like the gaping wound in his neck is talking to me. Oh, that's horrible. It, it's like, it's like it's that that's communicating to me. Which is like mocking a, me, it's taking the mickey out. So it's like a really bad dream, it's, it's yeah, like absolutely. something you've seen a nightmare. Absolutely. Now you mentioned this other guy as well, this, this other gentleman. 
you know, what, what, what does he look like? Who is he? He's quite young, and there yeah. seems to be younger souls around here, one or two. Almost, they're showing me, they're, they're telling me the age, or, or helping me with that, because I can see someone shaving and taking the mickey out of the fact that they're shaving, because they, they don't need to shave. Right. You know, they've got hardly any whiskers there at all, so I know that they're quite young. Okay. Um, but I can't... I can't get more of a fix on him. It's more images, so it may be residual. Is, is the guard's strong, but this might be residual. So, he, so this guy might be residual, but yeah. the guard is definitely strong in this particular yeah. area now. Yeah. David sensed dark shadows, a murdered guard speaking through his mutilated throat, and the sun hasn't even set. See you in a moment. My name is Francis Dolan. I'm the site manager here at Eastern State Penitentiary Historic Site. Um, I really enjoy working in the building. I like all of the visitors to the site, the ones you can see and the ones you can't see. Back to Most Haunted Live from Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. Well, right now we're going to catch up with the fascinating history of this prison, courtesy of our academic and historian, Leslie Smith. Hello, Leslie. Now, we talked very briefly about the prison and what a fascinating building it is. In its own way, it's unique in history, certainly in penal history, isn't it? It was absolutely groundbreaking, and that's because... Um I think you should think, remember that after the American Civil War, there was a great urge to change many things and reform and do things better. And here in uh, Pennsylvania, certainly that was well and truly underway with a society that was about the business of reforming the lives of prisoners. And so uh, people put out to bid and a British-born architect called John Haviland, in fact, won the bid and the place was built. And it was so revolutionary uh, that, in fact, it had central heating and it had running water at a time um, when President Jackson had just arrived there um, in the White House and he didn't have it. And it was copied all over the world, this oh, design? Oh, yeah, we think as many as 300 prisons, in fact, came off this idea. And it's, in fact, on this basis of, this, of the spokes coming away from the wheel. It's got a kind of monastic feel to it as well, hasn't it, about uh, contemplation? Absolutely, and not an accident. I mean, we've heard a little bit about it, but the point was Haviland and, and others felt it would be a great thing to get people, if you like, that the prison wasn't the punishment, but an opportunity to reform. It's a marvellous idea, isn't it? So consequently, they looked at monasteries where, of course, monks um, and nuns were close to God in small cells and hoped that this quietness uh, would, in fact, achieve... Um, the same effect, if you like, in the prisons, and they'd become reformed with God's light coming through the ceiling. And even the guards were encouraged oh, to be silent. When you actually realise what was done, it's terrifying now, because we understand so much about mental health and the stress of it, the panic and the distress. Even the guards had to wear socks over their shoes, padding around. You didn't hear anyone. There were exercise yards that were totally private for one prisoner, like a dog yard when you go to the kennel. These poor souls just didn't have any sense of another life. Now, we can hear the slight patter of rain already on the we roof can. here. That could have been possibly their only noise from the outside yes. world, because when this was built, it was in farmlands yes, in right. uh, Philadelphia. There's, there's a li there's, absolutely. We forget this is a mile away from the city there. But it was so revolutionary, and this marvellous medieval facade outside. No wonder John Haviland being British born would know a bit about castles, you see, and you can see that here. People came to look at it, I mean, in their thousand, they Even came Even Charles carriages. Dickens visited, but he wasn't completely impressed, was he? No, Charles Dickens, the great writer um, from Britain, well, of course, he came in, recognised what people were trying to do. He was a social reformer himself. And when he came here and saw it, he just said, he saw some work a man had done, an artist, and said, and when I looked into his face, I saw he was completely blank, you know, insane. This life had driven people to complete insanity, panic, Suicide, it was a desperate place. My name is Robert C. Snake Williams. I was a correctional officer from 1965 to 1970. The structure itself, I think, has the spirit, and it collected a whole lot of things over the centuries that it's been here. This place is alive. In 
a moment, Yvette Fielding and the team will start their night vision vigil and they're starting at the entrance to the prison. Here's some facts about it and maybe what they can expect. The imposing Gothic outer walls housing the main entrance and administration block would have been a convicted prisoner's first sight of the Eastern State Penitentiary. Purposefully designed to strike terror into the hearts and minds of offenders and to deter them from the commission of crime. In the 1920s, brick sentry boxes were added to the walls and machine guns installed. By 1938, an additional front gateway had been constructed. Final confirmation that the earlier ideals of penitence and rehabilitation had now been firmly superseded by the necessity to securely house hardened criminals away from decent citizens. The main administration block housed the warden's office, who made certain that the focus was now on strict discipline in order to contain the over-burgeoning prison population. This control would often involve the withholding of basic humanitarian rights, such as visits from home, something every prisoner would look forward to as brief respite from the harsh reality of penitentiary life. We can only guess at the scenes that would take place in the rather supernaturally named Visitation Room, where inmates met with their loved ones or their lawyers and perhaps rued the day that they ever entered the prison. So without further ado, let's get straight to Yvette Fielding and the team as they begin the vigil in earnest. David, you're on one side uh, of, this, uh, of this awful screen. This is where they would have come and, and spoken to their loved ones. As I said, their attorneys. Mm. What sort of things are you picking up? You don't, you're not happy, I know you're not. I'm not happy at all. I mean, I can feel the emotion of the place. I feel, you know, there's... I, I, the one energy that's really strong with me is is hopelessness, obviously, but it's, it's deeper than that. It's almost like it's a hopelessness, because not, is that someone tapping? Is somebody on? tapping on, on here? No one's tapping on this bench, you Because there's tapping going on on this bench, on here. Did you, you felt? Yeah, definitely, definitely felt it. My, my elbows are on the table, but that's all. Sure, uh, Chris, when you, 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 don't, you don't lean on. I know it's not you, but just. So we can discount the possibility that it's leaning on the... The uh... lightning is so strong out there as well. <coughs> All right, David. Whoa, Ooh. look at those lights. You OK, David? I'm OK. I feel massively emotional. I don't feel comfortable. I'm not happy. I've just had footsteps behind me. There's thunder and lightning. OK. Footsteps behind you. I just Who had is someone it? shuffle behind me. I heard... I heard a shuffling, but with shackles. I heard, a, I heard like two feet in the ch 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 of, of chains behind me. Okay. I can't, I can't pick up on any individuals because I'm picking up on a lot of residual. Okay. Temperatures dropping here at my side. You get that, Kira? Ah! Oh, jeez! What's the matter? Oh. What's the matter? What was it? Oh, f sorry. What, what it? happened? So I just thought someone literally just came right in my back like that. Bang! Oh! You all right? <laughs> something just smacked me in the leg. Something smacked you in the yeah, leg? Yeah, something just grabbed my leg. Right. Something just grabbed your leg? Yeah. Right up. What, like lightly or hard? No, no, grabbed my leg. Okay. Come on, whoever's here, then do something else. Did you hear that? That was me. Okay. Breathing out, yeah, that's me. Whoever, who is it? Who's here with us now? There's this person in shackles. A really big man again. Different one, it's not the same one. If there's anybody here, if there's any astral beings, if there's any spirit people that wish to communicate with us, please touch somebody again. We don't mean you any harm. We can help you if you feel trapped here. Please come forward. Please come and help us. Oh, I can hear it. Tapping. tapping. Yeah, Shag? Shaggy? Yeah. yeah. Where I'm are you? you. Can, OK. I think there's tapping going on. OK. <laughs> Everybody keep your feet still. If you are here, please can you tap loudly for me twice? It's behind David. Can you pick it up? Can you see, Shaggy? 
Do you want to go around? Yeah. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Please, can you make the taps much louder for us, please? If you're here, tap twice. Tap twice. Can you hear it over there? Just walking past around here. I it's around yeah. there. Yeah. But it's moving back again. It's moving backwards and forwards. Please, I will knock twice. Can you knock back? Yes, I heard that then. It was very quiet, but I can't tell you where the heck it came from. What was that? Someone kicked the bench. Someone kicked the bench. No one's close bench. enough to the bench. Someone to kick kicked it. the bench. Did, did you not hear it? Yeah. I heard the bench. Something yeah. was at the bench. Did you feel it on the bench? I, I was sat, sat here and the bench moved. It was like someone really kicked it. Chris is a good foot away from the bench and has not moved. No one else is near it. Okay. Do it again. Kick the bench again. Oh, can you hear that? What is that? Kieran, are you getting anything? No, the. Uh, temperature there's no difference I'm standing next to Dave with the probe EMF I'm on zero I know Carl has downloaded the ghost detector um, on his phone I'm getting zero on my uniaxle EMF meter um, are you getting anything on yours Carl um, it's uh, it's kind of uh, I'm just trying I'm, I'm actually trying to to, um, to kind of work out that the the points I'm not getting a, a, a strong reading. Every now and then, I'm getting uh, it goes right into the red, red, but then it'll go back down into the, into the green, so it's and then it'll level out somewhere in the middle. But it's not giving me anything that I would say is definitive at the moment. Okay. But it's I'll it's it's giving me a reading. Okay. okay, thanks. If you are here, please bang the bench again or touch David. Oh, can you hear it? Please copy me. That's me. Oh, sorry. Copy me again. Make it loud. There it is. It's over there. Do you get it? It's over here. It's by, by everyone. Okay. Are you male? If you are, tap twice. Oh my god. It's right here, and it's just made the bench creak. It's just made the bench creak. Are you getting that, Jen? Yeah. If you hear, please bang on this. Bang on this, if make you can hear us. Make sure everybody's stepping away from the bench, so they're on the other side of the corridor. Or kick the bench again. Thanks. There, can you hear it? Yeah. Kick this bench or make another noise for us. Or perhaps you can throw something or touch one of us here in the room. Any more any more information about this 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 guy, this prisoner? No, there, there's nothing at the moment. He's I just have this horrible feeling that we're just being teased and pulled back to the center of that web. Well, where I, I want to. What, what, what was the that? Heck was it sounded that? like it came down from, from here. That was mass. There you go, tapping. Oh, it is. It's Shaggy, you need to get round here. There's loud tapping too. Stay down there, yeah. My legs feel like concrete. Do you mean there's any harm if you do tap twice for yes, once for no? Do you mean there's any harm? Yeah, it's right here. Do you get it, Shaggy? I, I heard it. Okay, so you've got it. We've got it. Okay. Do you want me to... You got it? I got it. Okay. Okay. I feel quite sick, actually. Can you please tap out how many spirits are here in, in this penitentiary? What was that? What was that? That came from the courtyard event. Just on the other side of that window. There's a great big massive garden in the wall, isn't there? There's no one there. There's nothing there. Let's just see if we can get some more knocks. Just, just, okay, okay guys? Yeah. Stand still. Okay. 
If you can hear me, can you please knock twice? We have begun with a burst Not of intense twice. paranormal activity and we still have a long, long way to go. The vigil is continuing. I know you'll be with us after this break. Some amazing things have happened already in this building, which was occupied by prisoners for 142 years. Some unknown people, some forgotten people, some notorious people, and possibly, just possibly, the best known, most infamous gangster of all time. I'm talking, of course, about Al Capone, who spent two months here in 1929. His cell is the next location for Yvette Fielding's vigil. Let's take a look at that room and Al Capone's career. Cell blocks 8 and 9 were built in 1877. A set of surveillance mirrors sit at the head of the corridor, strategically placed so that the guards standing between them could have clear sight down the full length of each block. This block also contains the cell of one of America's most notorious gangsters, Alphonse Al Scarface Capone, arrested in Philadelphia for carrying a concealed weapon and imprisoned for that offence at Eastern State. He served eight months and it is said he was treated like a king. He had his cell furnished to his liking and it was not locked down at night. Its location at the intersection of the cell blocks gave him opportunity to apply his power and influence over prisoners and guards alike. He spent a great deal of time in the warden's office, making telephone calls, making sure that his business interests remained on course. Close to the Capone cell is the chaplain's office and chapel. An inmate who experienced a spiritual conversion painted the religious scenes on the walls during the 1950s. What residual energies still lurk within the cells? Only the coming hours will tell. So Yvette and the team were in cell block 8. I understand they're now moving towards Al Capone's cell. Yvette, where exactly are you now? OK, Al Capone's cell. I can't see. Where is it? Oh! What was what that? There? What was it? What was that? But what was it? What did you, what just smashed, smashed on the floor? It was something very there? heavy. Well, there's nothing here. There, look. <gasps> what is it? What is it? I don't think it was that. That's light. No, no it, it was It was something really... really it sounded really like metal. Heavy. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's... Keys! What are they doing on the floor? No, they wasn't They're very small. You drop that now. Drop that. Drop it. No. no, but what are these keys doing here? I don't know. What are they doing? Let's well, keep, let me keep hold You keep them. hold of those. They're freezing cold. Let's go into Al Capone's cell. Right, What's David. What noise, though? What noise? That thud. How am I going in here? <sighs> We're all behind you, kid. Yeah, quite a way behind you. Yeah. OK. Date, Kieran, as soon as you come in, can you get your, um, um, what do you want? EMF or whatever and just give us a quick scan of the room. Okay. I'm also going to get a thermal imager out okay. for the sounds. Stuart, Carl, let's get round this table. So this apparently, know? let's do this table thing. This apparently was, uh, Al Capone's cell. Um, you know, obviously, David, we're not going to be saying, you know, is the spirit of Al Capone no. here, because that would be a little bit too... Far-fetched. I don't know, yeah. maybe he's well, here, he but he, he didn't well. die here, we know that for sure. sure. Okay, just to explain, we're going to do a seance. We've got a big uh, a, a urn of water on the top. We've only put this on top because sometimes the table vibrates, but you can't see it at home. So what we've done is there's water inside, and hopefully you'll be able to see the water vibrate. Nothing might happen at all, but hopefully something will. Are you ready, Stuart, Carl? Yeah. Okay, okay you get around that side. Stewie? There, just stand that right there. Actually, that's a good idea. If we can Actually, the we'll just get here. Yeah. And shut the door. Shut the cell Yeah, shut the door. Okay, everybody. Oh. Fingers on that. Fingers on the. I'm on the table. The I'm on the table. The okay. You ready? Okay, David. You don't have to do the. We've done the protection, yeah. so just go for it. If there's anyone here, if there are any spirits in this place, please move this table. Table's going. Table's going straight away. Oh my God. Stopped. Please move the table as a sign of yes. Did you die here? Just 
tapping. You hear the tap, Shaggy? Mm -hmm. Move the table if you died here. <gasps> you need to get your boom on the ground, Shaggy, and see if we can get find out where that noise is coming from. Okay, so we've got taps and the table is moving, it's wobbling. Okay, keep going, David. Did you take your own life? <gasps> oh! oh! oh Okay, keep going, keep going, keep okay. going, keep going, keep going. Did you take your own life? It's moving. Okay. Did you die here in the 1800s? It's like a, uh... yeah. Okay, you ready? Keep yeah. calling out. Please move the table as the sign of yes or tap. Did you die here in the 1900s? It stopped altogether. It stopped altogether. If you're still with us, please move the table or tap. Tapping. Tapping. Hello, if you can hear us. Are you attack are you alright, David? No. What's the matter? No, it's okay, keep talking. Tables vibrating, Just... tables vibrating. Oh, tables going. You're right. Who's here, David? There's one male who lo <gasps> looks like he's hung himself. Oh. But I would say he's quite later. 1940s, 50s again. Are you the gentleman that hanged yourself? If you are, please move this table. There's like a failed escape, almost like a life sentence, failed escape, despair. Oh, God, I really don't feel good. No, I don't no, that's good. 1940s, so failed escape. So because yeah. he failed the escape, he killed himself. Yeah. Yeah. If this is true and you're here now in this room, please move this table. No, <gasps> okay. Okay. no something just touched my arm. It's fine. Cool. Sure. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. No, it wasn't. You weren't near me. Okay. If you are here, if you're here right now, and I know you are, do you need our help? If you need help, please move this table or tap or touch one of us. If you need our help. It's walking. Yeah. yeah, I hear it. Okay. Okay. Can you please tap four times for me? It was very faint that was. Okay, you all right guys? Are you suffering? Yeah. I feel like shit. I feel so angry. You feel so angry? Yeah. You? There isn't a lot of air flowing here. There's not. No. Okay, come on please, if you're here, you must need our help. If you committed suicide, if you hanged yourself, we can help you, I promise we'll help you. You getting that? You getting that, Shaggy? Did you hear it? Yeah, yeah. you got it, okay. Please not much louder, or move this table, or try and push this urn of water off the table. Just so we know that you're here. If I flick this water, can you try and flick it back? Try and flick some water. Where is it? Oh! That's me. Thanks. That's me. <laughs> Sorry. They'll cool this down. Okay. <laughs> Just try and move the water for us. Move the water. Touch one of us. Make a noise. Move. Table's creaking. Table's moving. Ooh. Table's moving. Yay. Oh. Okay, thank you, thank you. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. Can you do that again, please? Please do it again. I know it's very hard, but if you can try and lift this urn off the table, please, please do something else for us now. Move this table some more. We will help you if you want our help, but you need to give us more. Do you need our help? If you do, knock twice for yes. Was that yes? Okay. 
We will help you before we leave tonight. We will help you. Oh, oh, right. oh are you okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Were you nearly going? Oh, yeah. Carry on. Okay. What's up, Kieran? There is some way you can sit down. Okay, do you want to sit down behind you? Okay. Okay. I want you to move this table again. I promise we will help you. Please use all of our energies in this room now. Please try and tip the table. Push it up. Oh. Push it over. Come on, please. Any name with this man? There is a name. Come on. First names. I'm a bit reticent to say it. Go on. Well, only because it's a bit of a comedy name. Um, it's Homer. Okay. Just His yeah, first name? Uh, yeah. Okay. Homer. Homer, if you can hear me, please let us know by moving this table if that's your name. Is your name Homer? It's tapping. Tap. Two taps for yes. Okay. You all right, Kath? Are you, you all right, right Kath? Oh, all right, hang on, hang on. Okay, okay. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh, okay, 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 right, okay. Okay. Maybe we need to get out. You're Could right. Could somebody take her out, please? Oh, she's gone. She's come gone. On, she's come gone. On, come on. Oh, I've got you. Okay, no, Kath. Stuart, can you get Kath out? I'm getting her. Oh. No. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. It's all right. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Carl, Carl, Carl. 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 Can we get the nurse in, please? Oh. Come on, come on. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Can we get some water? Some water? Somebody get me some water. You're right, you're okay. Obviously, distressing scenes there. Television first, a seance in Al Capone's cell. Carl Beatty will, of course, receive medical attention immediately. Please don't worry, but do please stick around. Most Haunted Live, Eastern State Penitentiary, back soon. in the last 10 minutes. Carl Beatty collapsed. Kath had to be removed from the room. Carl has received medical attention, is fine, has rejoined the vigil group and they are heading for the hospital block. A place they've all dreaded. A place they've all had nightmares about. And here's why. Construction of cell block 3, which became the hospital block, began in 1823. By the mid-1850s, records note that it housed some of the turbulent insane. By the early 1900s, it is referred to as a complete and modern hospital, reflecting the general state of health of the population at large. A solarium was added in the 1920s for the treatment of TB sufferers, and the ominous metal gates were also added to prevent prisoners gaining control of the central rotunda. Several cells were refurbished for the accommodation of the mentally ill with psychopathic inmates held in solitary confinement. Its most famous patient, Al Capone, had his tonsils removed on the ward in 1929. It moved with the times and by the 60s had psychiatric offices and treatment rooms incorporated. The words rather them than me spring to mind as far as visiting the hospital block after dark goes. Yvette Fielding and the vigil team are there now. Carl, I understand, is fine. Yvette, I wasn't exaggerating, was I, when I said that the team have had nightmares about this particular part of the penitentiary? No, Paul, we, we've, we've all had nightmares um, about this particular location. I can't speak for Shaggy or Chris, but I know for the rest of us, we've had the most horrific nightmares about this place. Um, people have been waking up having choking sensations, uh, feeling they can't breathe, um, just awful, really, really bad. Well, this is the moment we've, we've, we've all been absolutely dreading, is this hospital wing. Before you so move on, here. Yvette, before you move on, can I ask how Carl and Kath are? Yeah, Carl, how are you, lover? You're all right. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm fine now. I've been checked over, and, um, uh, and I, I still quite, uh, don't quite know what happened. I, I need to see the tapes just to see if uh, okay. I can look back, but I'm fine now. Kath, how are you feeling? You're all right. I'm actually, I'm feeling better. My legs are just a bit heavy. I don't know what happened. It, I just, just went all funny. You're all right. Yeah, You'll be both all right to continue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, let's, let's get going. Let's walk very, very, very dusty in here. So it's going to kick up a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot of debris everywhere. It, it's, 
just the most horrific building. There's still hospital beds here from when the inmates <coughs> were here. Very dusty. David, what, what are you picking up on in here? Because it's a hospital, there's going to be obvious uh, things you're going to think about. But I'm trying to just make sure they're genuine before I go any further. Mm -hmm. But there is a male nurse that seems very, very strong. Mm -hmm. um, there's a prisoner, and there's also a it, like it, uh, someone in a white coat. Who I think is a doctor, but it's way back. I haven't quite got attached to yet. And you said earlier on that there was like a, a, an army of suicides these the army of men that, yeah. that, and women i suppose that that were coming and and do you think they're just going to follow us in here i think i think they are i think there's a hot there's a sense of there's a sense of gathering around us do you, do you know what i mean okay how many are in here now with us david and who are they there's one really strong one who's called james james and he's a nurse i think or an orderly there's, okay. there's certainly a white coat, and I can't quite distinguish who he is. Um, he died in this area. He died in this area. He's not, I don't think he's a prisoner. Okay, so he was a nurse. How old was he when he died? I was trying to see if he was like a trustee, you know, like he was a prisoner who was... Yeah. I don't think he was, I don't think he was. Okay. Uh, he would have been late 20s, early 30s by the looks of it. He's not old. And James, you say? Yeah. James. Okay. What did he die of? He's murdered. He was murdered in here. He in was here. murdered. He was certainly murdered in this area. <sighs> How was he murdered? Yeah. The, the first impression that comes to me, and I guess I'm going to trust that, is someone grabbed a, a knife, like a scalpel or a knife, and just slit his throat. Carl Stewart. Yeah. I know there's a, a, a part of this which is. A, a, an operating room I would like you two to go off on your own in there with another camera alright what to yeah I want you to go through there you two and investigate there we'll stay in here on our own well we're just here we're only here we're not, you know you guys are used to doing this kind of stuff god it's just awful okay Kath, you've seen lights in here, haven't you? Yeah, I saw something down here. Yeah, definitely down that end? Yeah, definitely. Okay, and you were saying, weren't you, that you saw a big black shadow go across yeah, the wall? Yeah, right across the wall, big dark okay. shadow. Now, you picked up on this nurse, I think you said his name was James. Mm -hmm. You've got a surname, but obviously out of respect. <laughs> oh, where was something it? Something flew through the air. What is that? Wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, that? wait. Wait, what is it? What are these? They're plugs. They're plugs. They're everywhere. Why? Well, it's impossible to tell what the hold hell. Hold on, hold on. There's so much rubbish. Just to the left of your foot. Yeah, it's a plug. Oh, look oh, at this. That. Oh, underneath oh, they the plug. Are they the webcams? That's probably why they're No. Yeah. Are they? Oh, it could be powering the webcam, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but why would that fall? Why would that fly? It, it would, might not be that that yeah, flew. It, it could be, be a rock. Could be, yeah. Oh, that you're picking up the heat yeah. source yeah. on the ice. Source Any other heat source? It's so hard, isn't it? Isn't that should be hot and the same. Yes. Okay, so yeah, it's not it that. I don't like it in here. No, I know. No, I don't none like of us it. like it, Kath. It's horrible, but you know. Oh God. Okay. Oh. Where was that from? What was that? I heard that it was like a snap. Okay. So we were saying you've got a surname, but out of respect for the families, yep. you know. We're not going to reveal that surname. We'll reveal it privately to Leslie okay. uh, later on. Um, but, you, but you've got this person strong, and he's definitely in here. Do you think he needs help because he was murdered? I think he does need help. He's, um, he's very bitter. Is that who's throwing the stones or throwing whatever it is? Do you know what? No. Oh, jeez. What? You've I got the look on your so. face. I think it's... Um, I think it's his murderer. Oh, no. Because I feel as if they're just... Oh, my God, I'm so frightened. There, there's like a play. There's like a... I'm, I'm getting two sides of it, and I'm getting the playoff between them still continuing. Okay. The murderer? Any name with him? 
Not at the moment. Okay. So is he, he? So he's here. Yeah. Okay. And he's the the doctor was called James or the nurse was called yeah. James. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If the murderer of James is here with us now, then please show yourself. Show yourself, you coward. What's the matter? Just no. Sorry, it's just the condition on my throat. My throat is going. Is it? Yeah, my throat. It's just the condition on my throat. I can feel my throat tightening, like the pain in my throat is really, it's like it, you know, right, my throat's cut. I know I've got a pendant on, I know that's got, I've had that on all night. This is James, is he picking up on yeah, James? Yeah, I think he's is, putting his hands. Ooh, listen. What was that? Listen to the banging. That was happening all the way through. Oh, oh my God, listen. Well, oh my god. It's, it's the same as before. It's that in the corridors, remember? Oh, it's like the worst horror movie ever. Okay. The murderer of James. Are we sure that's not thunder outside? It's too it's rhythmic, too isn't it? It's too rhythmic. Okay, it is okay. Definitely. If you establish communication and we can get some intelligent okay. answers, right. then we can discover. Okay. Now, lots of information coming in, lots of grisly sightings and visions and feelings from David Wells. Let's sort the historical wheat from that clairvoyant chaff, courtesy of Leslie Smith, a historian. Hello, Leslie. Hello. Now, David always gets lots of very general feelings. He narrows them down. He gets quite specific. He started tonight with a very specific and hideous image of a man with his throat cut. Yes, and I want to go back to that again because I've got some further information on it. I said at the time in standby, no warden was killed here. But I've discovered a warden was killed at another prison in a riot, and we believe his throat was cut. And some of those inmates from the riot were sent here, quite a batch of them. Um, cutting people's throats is something that's quite popular because it causes immediate silence. You can't cry out, and it's a quick and effective method. Um, also, I've looked into this James character, which is a separate throat cutting incident um, in the prison block. Yes, prisoners were used as orderlies, and uh, knives would be ready available there, and we have reason to believe that could well have been a prisoner. Many, many prisoners were killed by other prisoners here in this dreadful place. Okay, apparently I'm hearing that Carl's been affect being affected some way, somehow, I don't know. We don't have any walkie-talkie at the moment, um, something that we'll rectify later. So the, the thing about the... Uh, you know, I had the same thought, it might be the thunder, but the key thing is we found out from uh, the truck about the clap Carl's thunder. bleeding. I'm He's sorry, bleeding. Carl's bleeding. Do I need to go? I'm sorry, yeah. Well, let's just go Where as far it? as we can. Carl? Carl? Good, you go. Carl, come in! Oh, Carl, Carl. Oh. You're right, guys. What's We've happening? Got cable. Get the f out, quick! What's Carl? happened? He's been cut. All right, all right, all right. Get them. You want to get the paramedics here? It's sharpish now. Oh my God! Get them here. Right, okay. Can we need? Can we get a nurse? Nurse. Nurse. Okay. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not cutting your shirt. Oh, oh. Take that. Ah. Oh my God! We need to get this off. Just hang on a sec. Hang I'm on not a sec. Do robing on telly. No, I know you're not. But I need. Ah. I need to oh. look at what the hell is wrong, Carl. Just... Ah. Okay, we need to get you out, all right? Can we just get you out so the nurse can have a look at we exactly... Just, oh. freaking out of it. <sighs> no reason whatsoever. He, he moaned about his arm, he had pain in his arm earlier on. <sighs> I've not cut my arm, have I? I think we're going to bring him out. Oh, I cut my arm. The nurse is here. I don't know, I can't see, I can't see. Give a torch. Give a torch. What? Okay. What, what is it? I can't scratches. see. Scratches. 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 Okay. Hi. Take an operation. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. They're cool. Okay. I'll wait there maybe. Just clean it, will you? How's it feel? It feels Stay. fine. Sting. Burning. It's burning. burning. Just, just burning. I have a cool rag we can put on it. Mm hmm Okay. Should we do that? Do you want to step out, Carl, for a minute? You step out, just let the nurse see and then come straight back. Okay, there's a place to sit right over here. Okay, you're right, sweetheart. Yeah. 
Okay, all right. So watch your microphone. Sweetie, I want you to just step out with some water and let the nurse suck. Okay? All right? Are you all right? Well, what, Stuart, just, just hey. tell what happened, what happened? Okay. We were calling out earlier on and we were asking for stupid things to happen. Affect us, scratch us, all that kind of shit. And next minute, Carl just clutched his arm and I shone the torch where he, was, where he was holding his arm and there was just blood coming through. And that's when I started shouting out then. Right, I'll go with Carl. Keep me eyeing him. You all right? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. I don't know what to say. We've had this before. We had this, we had this phenomenon when we were in Edinburgh. It happened to Stuart. Stuart's still scarred from the scratches. And these two guys, you know, I, Carl's my husband, I was saying to him, for God's sake, be careful, but they want to experience these things. Um, and you can't stop them. You know, you no, always you give us protection and guidance and we all take it, but these two refuse to take it. Are you alright, Chris? Just feel a bit strange. You sure? You Chris, okay? you look a bit funny. Okay. What was that? There's stuff being thrown in here, guys. Okay. Someone throwing stuff Yeah, there's the stuff me. being thrown. You've been pulled. Did you? You are right? Someone's pulling Chris. Someone pulling on the cable. No, there's nobody. You look like you're about, Chris, you look like yeah, you're about you're to right. go. Chris. Right. No, you don't, look right. Chris, from, you, you don't look right. Chris, you don't look right. Chris, are you right? So, okay. No, you're you not. Sure? No, no, you're not. So, please, come somebody just, so, Chris, you just don't look happy at all. Chris, you're dancing about, mate. Chris, give me that. Yeah, yeah, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to Wigan and, and just give it to air. Wigan and get a bit of air. Can you move your left foot? Okay. Um, you're right? You're fine. You're not fine. I you're fine. Right. You're all tangled up and you're not right at all. This is Chris's. Oh, you feel like Chris. It's still on. tangled. Up. Someone's just pulling me, that was it. You're right. You're I'm fine. Right. No, you can stand here. Well, 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 you are, you feel it. I can't pull you towards you're me. You're dancing I'm about. Fine. I can't pull you towards me. Are you alright? I'm fine. I you want sure? you to do me a favour, mm -hmm. Chris. I want you to go outside and get some water and come back in five minutes. Can you do that for I'm me? I'm fine. No, you're not fine. I can tell you're not fine, okay. sweetheart. Can you just go outside for me? Mm -hmm. Can somebody just take Chris outside just yeah. for five minutes just to get some air? Yep. All right, please. he's very unsteady on his feet, so can somebody just help Chris? Sit down here, bud. Just sit down a minute, I'm going to walk out in there. Sit down here. We're getting afraid of bunny bags. Okay, Chris, this is his first investigation that he's ever done. He's a complete skeptic, doesn't believe in any of this. Um, and the look in his eyes, mm. it's just completely it's gone. gone. But when I tried to pull him towards me, he wouldn't come towards me, he's complaining of something bit pulling him. Something is in here, so is this this John? It's John if affecting, they've affected Carl, they've scratched Carl, they're affecting uh, Chris. It's, it's a collective energy. We're dealing with more than one astral, we're dealing with multiple okay. astrals. Right. You know how we work together and we work better because we work together? Yeah. What they're doing. What? Working together. Oh, they're stronger. Okay. Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live from East State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. It has been a remarkable night and it's not over yet by a long shot. We have seen the team injured, they've received medical treatment, they've been looked at by the nurse and some of them are downright terrified. And they're right to be. Cell Block 12 was built by inmates in 1909, using reinforced concrete for the first time rather than the rough-hewn, dark grey stone of the earlier cell blocks. It was the first of the blocks to be constructed on three storeys. The need for extra space now becoming paramount as the penitentiary population grew. It is also said to be the most paranormally active area of Eastern State, with myriad reports of ghostly sightings and strange phenomena. said be afraid be very afraid and fingers crossed for Yvette Fielding and the team Yvette where are you now Yvette 
I'm just, I'm just absolutely looking down this corridor and I don't know whether I want to go in it. <laughs> it does look, uh, I'm just looking at it thinking, oh my God, it's just, it's just pitch black. And after what we've experienced, and this, this, these cells are so dark now, off each, um, off the corridor. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Your mind's going to play tricks with you because you think something's going to come out of one of these cells. Do you know what we've not done yet? Do you know what none of us have done yet? We've not, none of us have gone in cells. I wonder why. Right. Oh. Let's, let's split up. Two in each cell. Oh. Okay? Okay. Chris, you stay out here with me and I'll come to each one of you in a cell. So oh, David. Oh, so hang on a minute. Outside. So what? we've gone in cells and you're coming to each one of us? Yeah. Fair. How's that work? Yeah, because stuff might happen to me and Chris out here. Might happen to you in the cell as well if you go in. Anyway. Well, I'm happy to go in with somebody. Right. Let's do what Yvette says. She's in charge. Okay. okay. So, so me and you can and I go with Kieran? You and Kieran go in there. No, thanks. Okay. In this one? Yeah, just get in the cell. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. We'll just pass along you with one... We've only got one camera, so we'll just pass along you door by door. The next cell, okay? Carl and Stuart, stuff happens with you two. Oh, God. Go on. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, grab that one. Okay. Okay. Who's yeah. left? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Kath? Yeah. Wigan? Yeah. I know you're cabling, but give it to Stuart Harrison. Get in the next oh. cell. Which one? This one here. This next one here, just next to this next this one here. Okay. Alright. What the hell? What was that? What was that? That was so heavy. That could have really hurt someone. You So that? No, it wasn't that. It was really, really heavy. Oh. Was it that? Oh. Do it again. Throw it. Oh. Throw it. What is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's what, it. Is it a rock? Oh, no. no, it's a, a, washer. a... A metal washer. Leave it rotten supper somewhere so we know where it, where it is. Yeah. That could have really hurt someone, that could have. You, uh, you know what it... I'm going to say this. Uh, there's a slight heat off there because it was on Carl's hand just now. Oh, sorry. But other than that, it's I can't I can't even pick it up now. I can't pick up a heat source. And normally, with these objects that are thrown, we get a very very strong heat source, don't we? Okay. But it's just nothing. Let's go back. Let's not analyse for too yeah, long. Okay. Let's let's go back. All right. Watch your heads, guys. Good. I prefer to be in a cell, wouldn't you guys? <laughs> okay, that was good. Make a noise for us, or affect some of the people in these cells. Oh shit! What's the matter, Stuart? What's the matter? That table above us just moved. What? The table above us just moved. It's on wheels. That's the table that they would have put food on or and they would have rolled it between each cell. Okay. Oh, it's moving. It's, it's what? It's moving. It's moving. You, it's moving. What? Right now. It's, I can't see it move. It was It just wasn't. creeped like... It was moving. It was moving. It was moving. Move it again. Move the table again on the wheels. Move it again. Woo! <laughs> Out here again. That one's still there, so it's not. Is there you there? are. Look at that. Look at that. Watch our torches, guys. Okay. Anything happening to any of you guys in the cells? In our cell. First, first thing that we noticed when we walked in, David walked over to the corner and saw a pair of handcuffs and said, "I wondered if those those are real." 
And I walked over to a point at the thermal imager, and uh, it's hot. And it's still hot now. A pair of handcuffs on the floor. Let's go into this cell. Come on. Do you guys want to stay in those cells? And then we'll come into you next, yeah? Cool. Yeah, that'll help. Come in, Edward. Look. I don't know if they're authentic or not, but look at that. Oh, my God, they're really hot. And it's just that if you look at the thermal imager, you'll really get an idea of what we're talking about. Can you, can you see can you get that? closer? Get closer and get right in. Can you not see it? There That's you go. Really keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. Hang on. Keep still. There, there. Look at that. Red hot. But they, they weren't even as hot as that when we were on. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> I'm getting hysterical. <laughs> oh my god. I don't start laughing when I'm getting possessed. Okay, do we know what that was this time? Okay, let's go. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on those. Yeah. Don't. You all right? Great. Where are you, Carl and Stuart? You all right? I don't know. Yeah, fine. It's really you are asking out for things to be thrown. Cause you're you're asking out for things to be thrown. If you, if you do I don't know. I don't stuff. know. I'm so flipping confused with where everything's going. Now, lots of information coming in, lots of initials, lots of names, lots of very specific stuff that Leslie Smith, our historian, has been busy researching, and I understand she has a fantastic direct hit. Leslie, we've had two very, well, very common names, but actually very specific names in relation to each other, John and James. What have you got for us? Well, it's not just John and James, it's what happened and what they did for a living. This, in my opinion, is the best hit Most Haunted's ever had because it's not published. So there's no way anybody could have found out in advance. Okay, remind us, first of all, what was the scenario? What this is all James? about. First of all, we get this information that this nurse called James, who, um, you know, we said some were used as orderlies, but David has said, no, this, this wasn't a prisoner. This was actually a nurse. Um, and that he was killed by someone called John. And he's right. But it's how he's right that makes the whole thing extraordinary. James Gaston was a nurse who was killed by, wait for it, John Billman, perfect, inmate number 1760, Gallery level five. Now, what's so important about this is this was a very long time ago. This is in the 1800s at the time when prisoners weren't allowed to mix with others. So he wasn't in the hospital block at that point. He was when it was a regular block. It wasn't a hospital then. And when you said this wasn't public knowledge, how have you managed to source Because this? it's within records that's not published for public view. So in other words, it's in the records all right, but it's not published for general consumption. It's not something one could have picked up from, say, the internet or from any book that's in front of me here or anything. So really, the information is so specific about it, it is absolutely staggering. Now, I've seen you excited before, Leslie. And it's sad, isn't it? But tonight you're throbbing with a historical passion. <laughs> <laughs> the like of which I've never seen well, because it's, <laughs> it's so uncanny that David has brought those two names together. There's a factual kind of underlining of it, but it's not open to the public. No, and, and the point is, of course, because they weren't allowed to mix, he was treated in the cell. Also, this chap nicked his uniform. Uh, which is, of course, um, English for stole, his uniform in an attempt to try to escape and was caught in that way. So I'm absolutely delighted with this because, for, in my opinion, this is really very strong. Have evidence. you any, any notion of what happened to the, the murderer, John, in this Well, case? he was caught trying to get out in his uniform because, presumably, there were one or two other things that gave away the fact that he wasn't a nurse. Um, and so, yes, he was caught. I mean, he would have been executed, I'm sure, because he was caught outright. When we return, Yvette Fielding and the vigil team, I understand, are about to conduct a witching hour seance. Back soon. live from Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. Now this place has operated as a prison for something like 142 years. 75,000 inmates passed through its doors, but nobody was ever executed here. However, this establishment does boast a death row. Let's take a look at the history of death row in Eastern State Penitentiary. The final cell block ever built in Eastern State opened in 1959. It was designed to hold the most dangerous prisoners in solitary confinement and was used as a punishment block. The top floor gave the block its nickname, Death Row, as it held inmates awaiting execution. 
Though none met their maker here, they were taken to the State Correctional Institution at Rockwell, where the sentence of death was carried out. Do you know what I want to do? Go home. <laughs> I think now we should get ready to go to death row, all of us. Let's do a Ouija board, let's do a seance, let's get all the bells, all the whistles, let's just let's put everything in okay. to this last hour in death row okay. and see what we get. Might not get anything at all, but it, it's definitely worth it. I mean, what other experiments we can do very quickly in there? Um, well, if we're doing a seance and David's getting the shaved head gentleman, we could do a photo fit thing and, and show people at home yeah. exactly the sort of face that he's getting. And i tell you what else we could do. We could do the planchette as well. Let's see if we can get some writing. Yes, good idea. Okay, so Paul, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're now going to get ready to go to death row for the, for, for the remainder of this evening. Thank you, Yvette. Well, it's been a long journey to the longest mile. The team are heading there at last. What's in store for the rest of us? Welcome back to Most Haunted Live from Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. And the team are heading at last en masse to death row. We've had a lot of information come through tonight. Some we've been able to source and research, some we haven't. I now want to find out from a historian, Leslie Smith, a bit more about death row itself and the death penalty in Pennsylvania. So Leslie, I said earlier on almost paradoxically, yes, people were held on death row here, but nobody was executed here. People died here, nobody was executed here. Why was that? Um, that wasn't the intention of the prison, um, and this is not necessarily to do with Quakerism, it was just the way the process worked. People died here in the way we've said, suicide or killing each other in that sense, and some died of natural causes like heart attacks. The death row, as they called it, in fact, um, was set up to hold prisoners who were indeed were going to be executed, but they were moved from here to other places such as Rockville, and there they were executed in the electric chair usually. Okay, but the electric chair, I understand, for a while wasn't used in the USA. Yes, it was, in the 70s, early 70s, it was, um, apparently it was decided it was unconstitutional and, and it was dropped, but people kept on, I mean, for example, in Pennsylvania here, they currently have the lethal injections they do in some other states. Uh, I'm told, I don't know if it's true, that in another state they even have the firing squad. So that's in place still um, in America, the, the death sentences, which of course we don't, we don't have any more in England. Um, that place would be pretty bad, you know. It would be pretty desperate to be put in there. And the sense of Dante's abandoned hope all year into here, which is probably something that David felt as well. Felt as well. I understand that the vigil team are now in place, led by Yvette Fielding, in place, not just any place. They are now on death row. Yvette, how are you and the gang doing? I have to say, Paul, we're not doing very well at all. Um, I just want to come over to Carl and Stuart. I don't know if you've seen what happened. We've raced a tape over to you. Um, I don't know if you saw, but basically something happened with Carl. He threw Stuart over the balcony. He landed on the bars. His leg went through. If those hadn't have held, Stuart would have been killed. And I'm not just saying that for TV or dra uh, dramatising it in any way. That is what happened. They're both here now. And I just want to show you exactly what... I'm sorry to be... Let's have a look at your back. We've got some torches, guys. OK. Can you see? So there's scratches on the back. Not too much. Take that other one off. There you go. There's scratches there. Let's turn around. Oh. And the oh, scratches there. Okay. <sighs> Stuart. Okay. That's not funny. That's not oh. good. And you've been hurt on your back when you fell. Yeah? You yeah. hurting on your back? And the jaw because you lump one on my jaw. You punched each other? Twice in the jaw and then punched me a third time and then he lifted me I think I went over as I went over I cracked the back of my head um, I, I on a steel rail you saw him something yeah what on earth happened I had not I, 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 I thought Stuart <coughs> because the side of my face is hurting but David told me he slapped me I, 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 rem I remember being in that cell and I remember th the trouble was it was like the, the cell was like it's weird it, it was like the cell was new it was it, Oh. You're right. Are you yeah, okay? Like, I can't work it out. There's like a bed. It was a bed. It was new. The paint was there. The paint was on the wall. And I'm not sure whether I want to do this anymore. No. 
Do you want to stay out of this bit now? I'm not going to quit tonight. You might as well carry on for it. I know, oh, David, uh, you, 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 you've I'm just... absolutely livid and furious with the pair of you. You've just said, I can't even remember what, do you know, I'm so angry, I'm blood red with it. I can't remember what you said. You just said something like, uh, you know, you don't want to do it anymore. You know? And you went out there and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. You asked for it. So what's next? Do you want to go and join them? Will you be happy when you're standing in the astral planes next to them going, all right, yeah, you do exist then, because that's where you're heading. I do apologise. Well, it's not good enough, sure. You have to listen to what I say. Mm -hmm. Sorry, David. You, this isn't playtime. It's not Disney. This is real. I can't believe you slapped me. I'll slap you again if I have to. Yeah, if I could slap protection into you, I would. My kids felt that slap. No, it's not no good for jokes or yeah. anything, guys. This is this is, you know, you could have died. What, what bothers Absolutely. me? Absolutely. What bothers me is that I can remember nothing. I need to see it. I need to see it back. I can't remember any of it. Okay. But um, that's the point. I, and all I know is is that what people are telling me. People are telling me oh. I pitched you up and threw him over a third floor of a, of a prison. So. But the point is, when they take you over like that, you don't know what's happening. You don't know, and they can make you do anything when you're in that condition. You could have, you could have run around and murdered us all. And there's no point in waking up and saying, "Oh, I don't know what was happening." There isn't, though, is there? Okay. Well, it just, sorry. It just fucking changed. If that's sorry for sweet. It just changed when we got into that cell. Within I'm a sorry. minute or two, okay. boom, totally different. It's all right. It's all right, man. It's no problem. Okay, <clears throat> are you are you sure Carry that you're on. happy to stay here in death row? Yes, we've, we've got this far. I will not let this beat me tonight. Okay. And are you going to have protection? No. No. Oh, don't be so... Come on, guys. You, that's just so stupid. I, 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 I can't quite get... Well, well, we're, we not, get we're, not, we're not... This, it? <clears throat> we're not... We're not... It can! We're not dead yet. It can get worse, Stuart. That's the point. You're not listening. Let's, let, let's crack on, but... You guys, you really have got to listen to David. You really have. We do listen to David. No, you don't. You don't. We do listen to no, him. No, you're not. You don't listen to him. My mum's going to be really okay. upset about this. Right. Right. Okay, right. Right, let's it's investigate the death over. row, okay? okay? Let's walk in here. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. Carl. Right. Cool. You sure you're up for it? <coughs> I'm cool. You just... Personally, I think you two should sit out I'm cool. no, and join no, in no, if you no. want to. Never, I've never missed an Carry investigation. It's starting now. I'm mm, crying out loud. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, I don't, I'm sticking with you. Right. Thing on the floor. I don't know. It's just a bucket on the floor. This is horrific. You can see here. Where they, on the floor, you can see sort of the bolts or, or where the bars would have been, if you can see. And those bars would have separated. So the prison guards, I think, would have walked down this part here. And then all of these would have had doors. Woo! What? What was okay. something down there? There was something down there. Like, or a shuffle. Let me check to make sure there's nobody there. <clears throat> <coughs> you're right, Kath. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Nobody there. Okay. Nice Let's keep there. walking. Oh, Carl. You all right? Right, Carl, Carl no, tell, I'm him. Fine. I'm tell him. I'm fine. I'm fine. Tell him. Go out. Tell him. You should go out. If I feel like I'm doing it again, I promise I'll go out. I promise me. I promise you. I'll go out. Who's in here, David? You were in here and you felt this Who big was that? gap. What? Sorry. Do you not just hear. <sighs> no. Did you hear it, Kath? Um, no. Was I the only one who heard it? Did anybody I else hear it? Heard. I'm, I'm, feeling, well, I'm feeling really I sick. I heard. It's too loud. 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 You sure? You don't look well. You don't look very well. No, I'm fine. If you're going to be sick, you need I some will be sick. If, well. I'm sick. if I'm sick, I'll run out. <clears throat> it is a vile place.
That's and cool. something tells me that tonight's journey, a remarkable journey, seven hours long, is going to end not with a whimper, but with a bang. Make sure you join me on Most Haunted Live from Eastern State Penitentiary after this. Welcome back to a remarkable and unique television experience. Tonight's investigation into the paranormal climaxes on death row. Yvette Fielding and her gallant team are there now. Yvette, what's the latest? Hi, Paul. Let me just tell you, we've lost our sound man. We've lost Shaggy. Um, I don't know if you saw what happened. We were in here for a couple of minutes and the poor guy just dropped. He, he just So we've got Stuart on sound. Uh, he's holding the boom. Um, so Shaggy's outside with the uh, nurse. Um, so far that means um, everybody apart from Wigan, Kieran and myself, we've not been affected. Um, I know I haven't because I'm so protected up to the, you know, up to the hill. But poor Shaggy, bless his heart, he, he was just all over the place. Um, Carl is uh, moved upstairs on his own. So that's where we're going to head now. Uh, I feel very sick. Uh, I'm not going to be sick, but I feel very sick. I know David feels sick as well. Um, we had a stone thrown when we first walked in. And now we're walking up to the second floor. What's shouting? What's shouting? Where? Oh, shit. What? What? Did you hear it? Oh. Is it, where's Carl? Where is Carl? Where is Carl? Carl? Where oh, are yeah. you? What? Where are you? Oh, by the webcam. Where? Oh, oh, here. Did you hear any noise? Where did you hear it again? It sounded far away. It sounded this to be the last. Place. Yeah. It's horrible. That's what I did when I was up here. This is your last view. This is your last place on Earth. Your it's last place, time. yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> this is home. Okay, let's call her. Okay. David, call her. So, is anyone here? There's any astrals? I brought my friends with me now. You can show yourself. To the gentleman I met earlier, show yourself. Is it walking? Oh, it's walking outside, someone's outside. Okay. It's just me. Touch one of us. Make a sound. Come on. Let's walk down. What I'm trying to do now is use death row as a focus for everybody in the prison. Okay, here so we we're go. So we're not just going to focus on death row now, we want them all to come. Do you want to do it here? Or do you want to move it closer to the stairs? the stairs? Carl? I'm going to agree with what Carl yeah, says. Let's it, go, let's it. just move it, but carefully because of the, the, the top. Okay, buddy? One, two, three, just move it. That's it. Thanks, Frank. Where are you going to move it? Sorry, guys. Back to the stairs where you suggested. Okay. Okay. Right, let's do it here. Brilliant. Thank you, Frank. Perfect. Thanks, sweetheart. Stuart. You ready, guys? Stuart. Yes. We've got five minutes left. Five minutes? That's all. Yeah, we've got a long you way. You ready? Time let's time. go. Amazing. Kath? That will take place as someone goes. Okay, let's see if we can get a name. I'm just putting a marble here down the floor. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> You've got a name. I still think the main character is Joseph. He's Joseph big, is here. He's the biggest one. Okay, you ready? It's Taylor. Okay. I can't say it, but... Okay, go. Does anyone here please move the glass? Use our energy to move this. Oh. oh. Okay. Usually that means you don't want us here. Flipping out, right? Did, Did you hear that? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Go. 
if you don't want us here, move the glass in a more violent manner, lift it up, or move the table. Let's hear your voice. For our help, we can help you. Promise we will help you. Move the glass. Oh. Where's it gone to? I can't see. Oh, it's not stopped. Yeah, it's not stopping. Can't see the letters at all. Can you spell out your name? Your number? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's one of those. It's ones, a playing it? one. Or oh, it's just snake, it's just. Go on. Move the glass to a name or a number. Lift the glass. Lift the table. What's it gone on to? K. Go. K. It was definitely K. Go. Thank you. Could you spell out your name? Here we go. There's another one. I. Oh, here we go. Okay. I don't know where this go. is going. Go. And again. Close okay. towards the L. L. Okay. Again. And again. Kill. Okay. okay, kill what? Kill who? Did you kill? Is that what you're saying? You're a killer? Or is that aimed at us? Is it aimed at us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Kill, kill us. Okay. Okay. If you're going to give us threats, the least you can do is give us your name. Yes. By the way, your threats don't impress me much. Why is he threatening you some more? Well, he's just doing it through this, and he's just getting right in my face. Is he? Who, do, who is he? What does he look it's like? Just this big, bald-headed individual. I think this is Joseph. Is it? Yeah. Kill. He's a You're nasty, right nasty one. Shatter the glass, go on. Stuart. G. G, or Stuart. G again. Okay. Or oh, Stuart, yeah, you're right. It could be yeah. Stuart. Okay. Looks a bit like you, Stuart. Huh? Does he look a bit like Stuart? Well, you know. Do you look a bit like Stuart? If you do point the glass to Stuart. No, you don't look like Stuart. <laughs> okay. Who do you look like? Do you look like a pretty boy? She's gone back to him. He's gone back to Stuart. Do you just not like G. Stuart? Yeah, but he's gone back to G. 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 Unless he doesn't like Stuart, of course. Do you not like Stuart? You ask, you ask. Go towards Stuart again. This is Stuart. If you don't like him, is that what you're trying to say? You don't like him? Just or is to, it G? Just to let you know, <clears throat> we're going to go back to Paul. It's the end here. We're going to carry on. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, we've had the most frightful, hideous night. The worst I can ever remember. And I think from, I can say on behalf of all of us, we're certainly not ever going to forget the Eastern State Penitentiary. No way. So it's back to you, Paul. A little earlier, you heard related by Yvette how Carl, her husband, had for whatever reason we don't know, attacked Stuart, attempted to throw him over one of the balconies. We weren't live at that moment. We did tape it. We've got it now without sound. See it and make up your own mind. We'll see you after this. Investigators led by Yvette Fielding return safe, if not altogether sound, from death row. Here they come back. We have got, of course, Yvette Fielding, Carl Beatty, Kieran O'Keefe, Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, our parapsychologist, the wonderful David Wells, clairvoyant medium. We have Wigan, we have Stuart, and we also have Shaggy on sound and Chris on cameras. New additions to the team. This has been, I think, from my shelter perspective, a remarkable night. Goodness alone knows what it's been like for the gang at the cutting edge. Oh. Yvette? You've been a wonder. Oh. How would you rate tonight compared to all the other most haunted lives we've been through? The best. 
it's, 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 it's completely um, blown everything out, out of the water. It's just, you know, really, really, it, it's beaten Pendle Hill, um, Edinburgh. It's, it's, it's just been amazing. And it was astonishing how quickly things started to emerge. I mean, very early on, David had that hideous vision, or whatever it was, of the man with the throat slit. He was talking from that gaping, murderous wound. How do you feel now, David? I'm relieved that we're out, really, to be honest with you, Paul. It has been, as the vet said, really horrific and just constant. Constant. Yeah. Okay, lots of you suffered tonight. Um, I think Carl, most of all, we can see the blood still on your sleeve. If you turn your, turn your left arm around. I think you should have a look at the scratches. I think you should turn around. Okay. And then on the front. We wear the six pack. So you're joking now, Carl, but at times you seem to kind of not just lose it, but actually to almost become somebody else, like when you attacked Stuart there. What I, was happening there? I need to look at the tapes. I, I, remember, I remember walking into the cell with Stuart, uh, and the next thing I remember is I didn't know where I was, and David was with me taking me out of the cell. The rest is a complete blank. It's just black. Black news. Yeah, I need to look at the tape. Okay, so well, I predict a pot of tea and a big line in your future tomorrow morning when you finally get you. to bed. Kieran, very quickly, an awful lot of evidence tonight, very different kind of evidence. What are you most intrigued by tonight? Oh, geez. I mean, science and scepticism, in a way, has been my protection tonight, but there's going to be so many things that we're going to be talking about for days, weeks, and months to come. I mean, some of it, yes, yeah, psychological, environmental, but when you get physical attacks, it's the sort of thing where gadgets don't explain it. You know, so we're going to be talking about it for ages to come. Because we had texting from people saying how hot it was, and that's maybe why yeah. people like Paul Shaggy and Chris felt a bit unwell. Exactly. Kath was taken yeah. poorly. I think there was more going on tonight. Would you agree with it? Absolutely. Definitely more going on. I mean, there were certain points where you thought, yeah, it is very, very hot in here, but I can't explain an awful lot of what, what went on. I really, really can't. And I think we're all going to stay up for the rest of the night and have a good glass of wine and a beer and talk about it, because we need to. Okay, let's thank a few people. First of all, the wonderful people of the USA in general and Philadelphia in particular who've made us so welcome here. It's been fantastic. And our amazing crew, the people who've come with us from the United Kingdom, of course, and also the new friends we've made here. They have been absolutely fantastic yeah. and professional. Yes, let's give them a round of applause. Yay, our American back. pals here. And of course, our resident historian. Where will we be at the wonderful Leslie Smith, as ever, academic historian and all-round good time gal. Above all, the amazing Yvette Fielding, David Wills, Kieran O'Keefe, Carl Beatty and Kath and Wigan and Stuart, Chris and Shaggy and the whole gang. Thank you very much. It has been fantastic. Final word from you, Yvette. Thank you. Would you do it again? Would you come back here again and spend another night in this prison? Of course. Need a big drink first, though. <laughs> it has been. It has been an amazing night. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have and maybe not been quite as frightened as we have. This has been an amazing experience. We're going to do it again very soon, we hope. Thank you for watching. Safe journey to all of you. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.